explain a bit on the logic of the chain reactions. If you look at the chain reaction in front of you, you'll see that they are a bunch of variables that are connected with arrows. And what we are trying to do is we're trying to depict human behavior based on these variables and seemingly the arrows that link them. But that's not necessarily a true reflection of how we behave as human beings. What you see in front of you is a most likely reaction or most likely behavior. Most likely. Of the way that we react as human beings. So if you look at, for example, taxes, you will see that an increase in taxes results in a reduction in disposable income. You'll expect that. But what that shows in the chain reaction going after that is that the most likely reaction is a reduction in consumption expenditure. What we're saying is, if government taxes us more, we'll spend less. Now, that doesn't always happen because we might supplement our shortfall in disposable income through, for example, taking out more debt, or we might delve into our savings. And then in effect, the reduction, or the supposed reduction in consumption expenditure doesn't necessarily materialize. So you must understand the limitations of the chain reactions. They are not a mechanical set of rules that depict the definitive behavior of human beings. What they are, are a most likely set of reactions by human beings. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I've mentioned this in previous videos, that the way that we behave is a function of historical data. But historical data might not always be a true reflection of how we behave right now. So what are you saying? So we must understand, therefore, that the situation that we are living in at a particular point in time might drive behavior, in this case now of consumption, in different ways. If you think of the time during lockdown, for example, we spent differently. There was some degree of spending still, although the economy was largely closed down, the way that the market reacted to that closing down and specifically the use of technology changed our spending patterns. You can think of many services providers who, who delivered their products literally to your doorstep it's not a case that if a policy is enacted by in the case that you see in front of you now government and taxes but it could also be the central bank through interest rates it's not necessarily guaranteed that people will behave the way that the chain reaction depicts so an increase in taxes according to the chain reaction does reflect a cooling down of the economy because you can see that total expenditure decreases, total production decreases, there's downward pressure on economic activity, GDP, and as a result of that, less economic activity, less demand, less production means that there will probably be downward pressure on prices and thus inflation, but it's not guaranteed.